Lewis and Clark Stay Historic Site is celebrating 20 years. Hi everybody, my name is Brad Wynn. I'm the site superintendent at the Lewis and Clark State Historic Site. Our video today is a continuation of our series of videos looking back at the 20th anniversary of the Interpretive Center, the grand opening all the way through through the bicentennial years. So our video today is the treasurer of the Lewis and Clark Society during the grand opening of the Visitor Center and during the bicentennial signature events. That would be Merrill Rosenthal. Merrill was, as I mentioned, the treasurer, but also a local history teacher here in the uh, Riverbend area, and literally the author of the history of the Lewis and Clark Society of America. His video will kind of deal with some of those early um, possibilities of what the historic site was going to be about, the early stories of really just getting this visitor center put together in the first place, and kind of his hopes and dreams for where he thought this bicentennial would lead us, and the recognition that it would bring for the Lewis and Clark story here in Illinois. Merrill was an avid golfer. In fact, was an, not only an avid golfer, but an avid promoter of the Lewis and Clark story here in Illinois. In fact, I remember when our brochures were first published, uh, Merrill made sure to grab a stack, as many as he could get his hands on, so he could keep those brochures in his golf bag. And every golfer I'm sure that he ran into on the golf course got a copy of the brochure, and a discussion about where Lewis and Clark's expedition began, here in Illinois, of course, and had they been down to the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. So I'm excited for you to join us today as we look at an early history of the Lewis and Clark Society from its treasurer, Merrill Rosenthal. In 1964, the Lewis and Clark Trail was established, and there were 10 states included in the original bill. Illinois was not included. And that was, as I said, Bernice was interested, Mrs. Kluge was interested in promoting the site that Lewis and Clark, that Clark started on the Illinois site. But Bernice was instrumental in writing and a number of people. In fact, we even got a local radio station that was here at the time uh, in on the act of uh, the fact that Illinois was left out. So it wasn't until 1969 then, and Lyndon Johnson, it was actually July, I think 27, June, excuse me, June 27, 1969, the bill was signed. And that, as a piece of archives, is also over at SIU, is one of the pens that Lyndon Johnson used to sign this 1969 act, okay, including the Illinois in the trail, okay, is on reposit. Uh, with this, uh, trail, the society, especially Clarence Decker, okay, became very involved in the, the establishment of this and the organization of the Lewis Park Trail Commission. And the promotion, I guess is the best term for it, the education of okay, the Lewis and Clark expedition, not only here, but all the way across the West. And this gets back to good old Gus, who kept reminding me that from 1969 until, until 1999, uh, the people out West built okay, Fort Mandan and they built Fort Clapsett. But what were the people back here in Wood River area doing about a fort, a, excuse me, a camp, Du Bois. This was not a fort, this was a camp, even though it was a military expedition. I think the greatest impact it had was to try to permeate, uh, emphasize, 
to enthusiastically uh, get the people here moving in the direction of a camp. Uh, but unfortunately, for many years, uh, the main thing was the education. Uh, Clarence Decker and, and a couple other people were involved in National Trail, but uh, nothing okay, germinated here locally for a campsite. And the sad thing about it is, and I have not gone the whole trail, but I've been in places like Three Rivers. They have an excellent museum up there. Okay. Uh, just, But here, if somebody comes here, as Gus said, somebody came to the Arch, the Arch completed in 1964. People came here to the Arch, and they had to display there at Lewis and Clark. Well, where did they camp? Well, across the river, you've got a little... Okay, little stone over here. This is the basis. You can come over here, you can look at the confluence, you can see the Missouri River. There's nothing here. I don't think we were embarrassed, I guess the term, that we didn't, that they had Fort Mandan, Fort Clapson, but we didn't have anything here. Because there was even mention, and I probably haven't told this this before, but it was even mentioned that the fact that Mandan and Clapson were brought up with private money, you know, what about getting private money or doing something like this? And uh, the only private money we ever got was if we needed to fix the road going to the to the marker. Uh, or we could get somebody coming out from the uh, county correctional department to clean the trash, you know, and to clean up debris. And we're still, we were still here, is the way I saw it developing. And certain people may not agree with me, but I think it's basically okay, somewhat the same in that you know, we're the original Lewis and Clark Society. We got it started, but then it moved west, and now it's our our time to get back in the swing of the Trail Commission and to be a viable part with this with the site and with promoting the trail. In other words, we can promote the trail now even more. I think we could had no way of promoting the trail because we had nothing here. They had something, we had nothing. Now we can promote the trail, say, hey, you start here and then you go to St. Charles, then you go to Kansas City, then you go to Sioux Falls, then you go to the Great, then you go to Twin Two Rivers, or you go to Mandan, okay? go to Two Rivers, go to the Great Falls, go on across the Bitterroots. You can go on west. Okay? In fact, that's what we're going to do in 2005. We're going to leave here and go all the way. Never been to Ast I've never been to Astonia. Never been to Fort Claps at our Fort Mandan. So that's that's going to be our. Uh, summer trip next next 2005 because I figured it'll be following the people out there. How many members uh, are in the society today? There are over 200 members in the society. Uh, what's happened with the society is that I just happen to be treasurer in this transition. We had about you know 79 members in 2002 2000. When did I take over? To, I don't even remember when I was took over trade. 2000, like 2001. 2001, yeah. And the time I left the treasury, there were over 200 members. And we went from journal entry to uh, computer entry. How often did Largely you Largely in thanks to Don, though. You know. he, How edu often he educated, did you meet? He educated this old uh, guy. We meet quarterly. Okay. And. Uh, was it always that way, or in yes. a long time well, ago? Did it's you always that way. Well, I think I said this way back. When I joined the Society in 1971, in fact, I thought about this as a prompt, is to put a coffee cup and a piece of cake on the table, okay? Because that's what society means, where every okay, January, April, okay, se September and December, anyway, quarterly, Every three months on the third case Sunday, okay, 
at two o'clock in the afternoon, we met at the Lewis and Clark restaurant. And Clarence would have coffee and either pie or cake, whatever I guess the dessert of the restaurant was for the day that was left over. I probably we thought probably left over, but anyway, I hope that's not on tape because well, Clarence is gone. Anyway. But <laughs> but anyway, uh, how many people would come to the original? Oh, we meeting? would have. Uh, I ought to look at my old records. I, maybe we would have ten people. We would have the president, the vice president. I served that capacity at one time. Uh, secretary, treasurer, uh, and let's see, Don and Elmer and yeah, yeah, seven Clarence, yeah, maybe eight, ten people that we would have at me. I mean, uh, were they all from Illinois? They were, yes, except once in a while, as I said, Gus Buddy, he was from St. Louis, and William Clark Adrian, as I said, basic of the meetings met in the basic discussion was to get Illinois you know, recognized as the starting point. But uh, until the 80s, uh, there was no real push to have something built you know, in the floodplain. So but how long the, did you keep meeting at the restaurant? Did you do that for... We did that first 10 until, years or oh so? Oh no, or? we did that, oh gosh. Clarence Decker joined the society as a charter member in 1957 and uh, he died in, well, he died in the early 80s. And so they were still meeting at the restaurant. I quit attending meetings, I told uh, Don this, I said, when they would not accept the fact to build something on the land there, the floodplain, uh, my proposal when I went to the state representative was to get the state to buy that land, 40 acres or whatever, buy the whole 160. I, you know, idea. Uh, I guess we can put this on tape. Everett's uh, representative Steele said, well, let's get the whole thing in a bill and put little uh, camping sites, you know, where people could bring their camper. And I said, well, no, I don't think, you know, that, that didn't, didn't appeal to me, you know, to have camping sites there. But that, I said, if that's what it would take to get it through, fine, you know, we go that way. But uh, uh, he wanted to buy the whole thing all the way down to the old Oldenburg Road, which is way south of, well, actually it's Grand City city limits now is what he, he wanted to, but they said no, you know, I mean, they had to be on the river. Uh, Your vision was always that there was an interpretive center and not just a monument or? No, my or vision was a campsite a camp. and interpretive center. I mean, I started out in 1972, you can ask Hintzminger, I don't know, you know, you know Jim? No. Dunner? Oh, okay, anyway, you need to meet him, he's a nice guy. But anyway, he started coming in 72, okay, I started going to Cokie Mountains, right? And that's where I, I guess you might say I got the vision. I said, if they can put something at Cokie Mounds, you know, the great earthworks, okay, then they could put something, okay, at Lewis and Clark. You know, there should be something here. So you and wanted to expand that history and get people to focus Lewis beyond, and Clark, yeah. Right. And say there you know, was a lot more. Yeah, you know, we got Lewis and Clark. We've got uh, uh, the, old, the old penitentiary here, the state. You know, we got the King, well, I think Costner site is all, you know, gone. And I don't even know what they're still doing at Campsville. I got involved in that too. I spent a summer, spent a week, a week up there too. I had students do that. Uh, see, my history is not limited. To just this, my history is is to get you interested in this, or get you interested in this, or get you interested in this.